In this video, we'll discuss a few types of transform filters that can be used in RayTK scenes, including bend, kink, elongate, and extend. It builds on concepts introduced earlier in the series, so I recommend at least watching the concept section and the first transform filters section before this one. We'll start by setting up our renderer. Open the palette with Alt-R and create a Raymarch Render 3D. And you can use the RR3 as a shortcut for that. And then create a null top connected to the output so you can see what's coming out of it. I'm going to set the resolution to fit it in the side panel, but you do not need to do that. Select the renderer and use the Alt-Shift-R shortcut to open RayTK's Editor Tools menu, and choose Add Look At Camera. On the camera, we're going to set the FOV angle to 70 and the position to 2, 3, 5. The first filter that we'll look at is Bend. Open the palette again and create a box frame SDF and we're going to connect that to the first input on the renderer. On the box frame, we're going to set the scale to 2, 1, 1. Open the palette again and create a bend operator, and we're going to insert that between the box frame and the renderer. This operator bends space along one axis towards another axis. By default, it's along the x-axis and towards the y-axis. Try adjusting the amount and see how it bends upwards in the y direction, or for negative values, downwards. Note that it does produce some distortion in the areas that are being bent the most, so you may need to be cautious about how you use that. You can also push the bounds of this amount beyond that range, but you'll get some very strange results with some render glitches, but it might be an interesting effect anyway. Try changing the shift setting to change where the center of that bend is along the axis that it's bending along. So here we're moving it over to that side and then moving it over to the other side. Change the direction to along Z towards Y, and see how it's still bending towards the Y direction, but it's doing it along the Z axis. You can also use a field to control either the amount or the shift. I'll open the palette and create a wave field and we're going to connect that to the bend input, which is for the amount. When the amount changes too much in too short of a distance, you're going to get render glitches like this. So let's increase the period to 4 to spread it out. Try adjusting the amplitude control to control the amount that that wave is being applied, and then offset to apply bending um, to all areas in addition to the wave. And then you can use phase to shift it along the x-axis. The next filter that we'll look at is kink, which is similar to bend. We'll create another box frame SDF and connect that to the first input on the renderer. We're going to set the scale for this one to 2, 0.6, and one. Create a kink operator and insert this in between the SCF and the renderer. This operator bends space, but it does it at one specific spot rather than continually increasing the bending further out. Try increasing the amount to get it to bend more and you can use the offset parameter to move where 
that bend point is along the x-axis. You can also use the spread parameter to control the width of that bend area. So at a very low value, you'll get a really hard cut there. And at a higher value, it's going to be more spread out. Try decreasing the amount to a negative value, and you'll see how it behaves a little bit differently when it's going in the positive direction than the negative direction. So you can use this side parameter to flip it so that it will bend, in this case, towards positive y, which would be upwards. And then you get that kind of reversed um, effect when you're going downwards on negative y. Next up is elongate. Create a torus SDF and connect that to the first input on the renderer. Set the axis to Z, the radius to 1, and the thickness to, say, 0 0.4. Then create an elongate operator, and we're going to insert that between the torus SDF and the renderer. To make this easier to understand, we're going to start by zeroing out all three parts of this size parameter. That gives us back our original shape. Try increasing just the x part of the size and see how it stretches out a middle area of the shape and then pushes each of the sides apart. Try changing the center x position to move where the center of that blend area is. Note how it takes whatever was originally at that center point and sort of repeats it continuously to the other side. So when the cut point is in the middle of the torus, you'll get those two connector parts up at the top. But when it goes off towards the edge, you get a kind of solid region filling that because that slice of the torus is solid there. Then try using the other two parts of the size, and you'll see that you can basically do this on all three axes. You can even use a negative size, which basically cuts out or a chunk of space along that center area. Finally, there's the extend operator. It's similar to elongate, but it extends out to the sides infinitely rather than stretching out the middle. Create another torus SDF and connect that to the first input on the renderer and set the radius to one. Now create an extend and we're gonna insert that between the torus SDF and the renderer. With its default settings, this gives us some pretty strange results here. In some cases, SDFs can get a bit strange when they're extending infinitely with this operator. So we're going to start by setting our size to 3 for all three axes. And that means that the area that is being extended from is large enough to fit that entire shape, so it isn't uh, actually doing any extending there. Decrease just the x part of the size and, and see how it is basically taking a cross section at the bound of that inner region and just stretching it out infinitely on each side. You can also use the center parameter to change the center of that blend area. Decrease the z size. And note how when the corner areas are in the extend on both axes there, it's going to create an infinite flat plane off to those sides.
Like most transform filters, we can also use this operator on things that aren't SDFs. Create a cylinder SDF and connect that to the first input on the renderer. Set the axis to X and the height to three. Create a wave field and connect it to the radius field input on the cylinder SDF. Decrease the amplitude to 0 0.5 and increase the offset to one. This will give us a radius ranging from 0 0.5 to 1.5, varying using a sine wave. Create and extend, and we're going to insert that between the wave and the cylinder. And since this wave is only based off of the x-axis, that's the only part of this extend that we're going to need to use. So if you increase the size, you'll see how it is within the inside area. It's just that original wave. But once it hits that bound, it just extends that value all. So in this case, it's a value that's almost close to that maximum of 1.5. And just any point beyond that just uses that as the radius. Then you can use the center to move where that slice is in space. And that's it for this section. Stay tuned for the next video in the series. Check out my Patreon for access to exclusive tutorials, scene downloads, and more. As always, thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe.